The Rover 827 and Sterling, Austin Rover's prestigious new flagship range. Incorporating further refinements to the already superb drive and handling of the 825. A new 2.7 litre engine with fully integrated programmed ignition and twin tracked inlet manifold. A new electronically controlled automatic transmission system, restyled center console layout, and a vacuum operated cruise control system. All this adds up to power, performance, and specification that are second to none. This program introduces the new features of the Rover 827 models fitted with electronically controlled automatic transmission. We'll outline the main differences between these new cars and their predecessors and how these changes affect servicing procedures. The 2.7 engine is a natural development of the 2.5 the extra capacity has been gained by increasing bore size by 3 millimeters. But the 2.7 litre power unit is much more than this. The intake system has been completely revised to give even more refinement to the V6 engine. One totally new feature is the twin tracked inlet manifold. This design increases inlet tract length at low down and mid range conditions to increase engine torque. The 2.7 engine is the latest in the Rover range to receive a fully combined engine management system. Both fuel and ignition are controlled by a single ECU located under the front right hand seat. Another main feature of the Rover 827 range is electronic automatic transmission or EAT as you'll come to know it. This system has been designed to offer more accurate control of shift speeds and torque converter lockup. The gearbox selector arrangement is mounted on a new high level center console. There's a new sports or S position in place of the old D3 position on Rover 825 models. D is the normal driving position providing four-speed operation with cruising gear change points. Once S is selected, the transmission operates within the first three gear ratios. The car stays in each gear for longer to give sporting performance and excellent acceleration. As well as this, the car will kick down to a lower gear at higher speeds. Whilst in S mode, you can add the fourth gear ratio to the sports range by pressing the S4 switch beside the lever. In S4 mode, you've all the sporting performance of the S mode, but the gearbox will change up and down through all four ratios. A light on the instrument panel illuminates when S4 is in use. Once the selector is moved from S, the S4 mode automatically switches off and can only be reselected when the lever is back in S position. When the car is slowing to a standstill with the throttle released, second gear is engaged to prevent engagement shock and stop the car creeping at idle. As the car moves off, first gear is engaged normally. A high temperature disable unit is fitted to all 827 models with air conditioning. This system isolates the air conditioning compressor clutch when coolant temperature rises above a critical level to reduce load on the engine. There are two main components to the disable system. An ECU located behind the right hand headlamp and the temperature sensor in the radiator top hose. Parts of the wiring harness have also changed with the introduction of the 2.7 engine. Some of the sealed joints in the harness and at certain earth points, 
had been replaced by these special connectors, known as headers. Earth headers are coloured white and have six pins, all of which are interconnected. Headers in the harness have 20 pins, but an important point here, some harness headers do the job of several sealed joints, so certain pins may not be interconnected. There are some revisions to connector location. For example, the door harness connectors have been moved from the engine bay to the interior of the car at the base of each A post. This provides complete protection from the elements. All harness modifications have been made to further improve reliability. So those are the major refinements of the Rover 827. Let's now take a closer look at the most striking changes on the new car. The engine management system, and the automatic transmission. The fuel and ignition systems are combined and are controlled by a single engine management ECU. First, the fuel injection system. To understand the whole system, it would help if you watch the Service Insight program PGM-FI as here we'll concentrate only on the areas which differ from the 2.5 litre system. Major changes have been made to the air intake system. The resonator, under the bumper, now has a vacuum operated valve fitted in its neck to keep intake suction noise to a minimum. The engine management ECU controls the operation of the valve through this solenoid. When engine speed is below 3,800 revs per minute, the ECU energizes the solenoid. This directs vacuum from its vacuum reservoir to the resonator valve diaphragm. The valve then opens, reducing intake noise. Moving along the air intake system, you'll notice that the throttle body now has only one throttle valve instead of the two valves fitted on 2.5 models. The fast idle valve, electronic idle control valve and throttle damper all operate in the same way and are fitted in the same place as on the 2.5 litre cars. Perhaps the most significant refinement to the intake system is the new twin-tracked inlet manifold. This arrangement actually changes the length of the manifold to give a long inlet tract, good for torque at low and mid-range engine speeds, and a shorter tract for high speeds. The manifold is made up of three parts. The middle section has 12 ports. The six oval ports contain butterfly valves. When the engine is running slowly, the butterfly valves are closed. Air entering the throttle travels round the small ports in the lower manifold, through the bypass valve body, and into the small ports in the upper manifold. When the engine reaches 3,800 revs per minute, the valves open. This, in effect, provides a large diameter short cut for the intake air. It reduces the tuned length of the manifold to suit high speeds. Air now enters the manifold, travels through the open bypass valves and straight into the upper manifold. That all sounds easy enough, but how is it controlled? Well, the engine management ECU controls two solenoid valves in the control box on the bulkhead. These direct vacuum to the bypass control diaphragms. There are three valve settings. Fully open, half open and closed. At idle, both control solenoids are energised. 
vacuum is fed to both bypass diaphragms and the valves close off. Between 3,200 and 3,800 revs per minute, only one solenoid is energized. This directs vacuum to the lower diaphragm only, and the bypass valves open halfway. Above 3,800 revs per minute, both solenoids are de-energized, and the valves are fully open. Those then are the major changes to the air intake side of the fuel injection system. Now the modifications to the fueling side. The basic operation of the system remains the same. The crank angle sensor has changed and is now referred to as a cylinder and crank sensor. The camshaft gear now has 24 inner poles together with the single pole on its outer circumference. These extra poles cater for the added information on crankshaft position the combined engine management system needs. There is now an extra TDC sensor in the distributor housing, which provides a backup signal to both the fuel and ignition systems if the cylinder and crank sensor fails. This is factory set and must not be adjusted. Two fuel injection sensors have changed position the idle mixture adjuster, IMA, and the atmospheric pressure, PA, sensor are now both located under the dashboard next to the under-dash fuse panel. The procedure for engine tuning is essentially the same as on 2.5 litre models. Always refer to the 2.7 repair manual pages for the up-to-date settings. A hot restart system has been fitted to vehicles with air conditioning. This improves starting when under bonnet temperatures are high. When the ignition is switched off and oil temperature is above 105 degrees Celsius, the cooling fans are switched on in slow speed and will run for about 30 minutes or until the temperature drops. The system is controlled by a separate ECU under the front right hand seat and an oil temperature sensor in the rear camshaft cover. Now the ignition system. A programmed ignition system replaces that used on the 2.5 engines. The ignition coil is controlled by an igniter as before. However, the igniter is now located on the left hand wing valance and is controlled by the engine management ECU. To determine basic ignition timing, the ECU needs to know engine speed and load. The speed signal is received from the crank and cylinder sensor, and the load signal from the manifold absolute pressure or MAP sensor. This basic ignition timing is continually modified by signals from the coolant temperature sensor and the intake air temperature sensor. During cranking, Signals are provided from the cranking terminal of the ignition switch and the TDC sensor in the distributor. Ignition timing is checked at idle using a timing light. If adjustment is needed, simply advance or retard using the adjuster in the control box. For example, if the owner wishes his car to run on unleaded fuel, retard the ignition to 11 degrees before top dead centre. An important point to mention here is that the marks on the adjuster should only be used as a guide. You must always check with a timing light. Then place the unleaded fuel label on the air filter box to signify the engine has been retuned. A flashing LED self-diagnosis facility, similar to that on the 2.5 engine, is used on the 2.7 engine management system. And as before, the ECU will hold a record of intermittent faults in its memory. A 2.7 PGMFI fast check tester is available for fault diagnosis of the engine management system, enabling you to pinpoint faults quickly and accurately. Before you connect the tester, 
check the diagnostic LED. If it's blinking, the number of flashes will tell you in which area to look for a fault. As there are now two fast check testers, always make sure you use the correct tester and lead. If the cooling fans run when you switch the ignition on, you're probably using the wrong tester or lead. For all dealers with Cobest, a new pod and harness has been developed for the 2.7 engine. The test sequence is similar to that for the 2.5, but also incorporates checks on the programmed ignition system. The Rover 827 cruise control system is vacuum operated. A fast check unit has been developed for diagnosis of both this and the servo operated system fitted to 825 models. Now let's take a look at the Electronic Automatic Transmission, or EAT. Mechanically, this transmission is very similar to the 4AT unit used on 2.5. All gears are in constant mesh and hydraulic clutches are engaged to achieve the different gear ratios. Where this transmission really differs is in its control system. Although hydraulic pressure is still used to engage the clutches, the timing of this engagement and hence gear change timing is controlled electronically. As in a conventional automatic gearbox, shift valves are fitted, one for each change. The difference is that there's no governor or throttle pressure acting on either side of the valves. There is now only one pressure, known as modulator pressure, shown here in blue. The shift solenoids control the flow of modulator pressure acting on the shift valves. When a gear change is needed, pressure moves the shift valve and the appropriate clutches are applied. The shift control solenoid valves are energized by an ECU under the front left-hand seat. This unit receives information from various sensors to determine when gear changes take place. The other two solenoids on the gearbox casing are used to give precise control of torque converter lockup and to increase engine braking by implementing lockup under deceleration. As on the 4AT transmission, there are two operating cables, the kick-down cable and the selector cable. These must be correctly adjusted at all times to prevent damage to the transmission. The procedure for adjusting the kick-down cable is the same as on the Rover 825. Always take care that there's no slack in the cable. This can cause low line pressure to the clutches, leading to slip. Selector cable adjustment is also much the same, but because of the redesigned centre console, the operation has changed slightly. To determine whether the selector cable needs adjusting, there are now engagement marks on the selector console itself and a centre line on the selector lever. When the cable is correctly adjusted, initial engagement of reverse and drive takes place when the marks are aligned. To adjust the cable, First, remove the centre console. Push the shift lever forward and slacken the lock nut. Then remove the locking clip. Pull the lever back and push the inner cable fully forward. Then pull it back one detent to the reverse position. Push the lever to R position and engage the turnbuckle with the inner cable. Rotate the turnbuckle until one of its holes is aligned with that in the inner cable. Now fit a 3.9mm test pin. Pull the lever fully back, then forward to the R position. Rotate the turnbuckle to find the point at which the pin slides through freely. Finally, tighten the lock nut and fit the clip. Before refitting the console, carry out an engagement check using the marks on the quadrant.
The automatic transmission ECU has a diagnostic LED similar to that of the engine management system. When there's a fault in the system, the red LED will blink a set amount of times, depending on the nature of the fault. Whenever a fault is present, the ECU will implement a pre-programmed backup for the faulty sensor or circuit. This enables the car to run, albeit with reduced drivability. The S4 light on the instrument panel serves a dual purpose. Apart from illuminating when S4 mode has been selected, it will flash whenever the diagnostic LED is showing a fault to tell the driver that something needs checking out. Like the engine management system, the transmission ECU will hold a record of intermittent faults in its memory. However, the warning light on the instrument pack will only indicate the intermittent fault as long as the ignition is left on. If the ignition is turned off, the fault must occur again for the S4 light to flash, even though the diagnostic LED is still showing a fault code. Once you've repaired a fault, pull the alternator sensing fuse to erase the memory. A table of fault codes will be included in the fault diagnosis manual. More in-depth checks can be carried out using the electronic automatic transmission fast check. This plugs into the system in place of the ECU. Remember, check the diagnostic LED first. It may save time. The fast check monitors all ECU inputs and also energizes the solenoids to check for a correct response. LEDs on the fast check illuminate to show which areas of the circuit have passed. So you get the picture. By now you'll have realized the Rover 827's a very impressive vehicle, equipped with everything the driver should need. Let's take another brief look at the most significant changes. A 2.7 litre engine with excellent power output and torque to match, a showpiece in its own right. A new programmed ignition system controlled by just one combined fuel and ignition ECU for precise operation. A variable resonator that keeps intake noise to a minimum even at high speeds. An intake manifold with two inlet tracts to give excellent torque output for both town and motorway driving. An electronic automatic transmission system that gives precise computer control of shift speeds. Further driving options with three and four gear high performance sport modes. Inbuilt selector overcheck marks for quick and simple calibration. Engine management and EAT control units with the capacity to diagnose faults in their own systems. New headers to cut down on the number of sealed joints in the electrical system. Repositioned door harness connectors for complete protection from water ingress. A new vacuum operated cruise control system. A hot restart system fitted to all models with air conditioning. Repositioned idle mixture adjuster and ignition timing adjuster. Three new fast checks for cruise control, 2.7 PGM FI and EAT, and a new Cobest pod. The new Rover 827 range with electronic automatic transmission provides a further step forward for the already successful 800 series. unparalleled power and performance to keep the rover one step ahead of its rivals.